So we come to the next speaker of this afternoon's session. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. So I'm happy to introduce Yenel Bins. Yenel Bins is a worldwide life and natural science group manager at HP. And what has to be reminded, we showed you the list of sponsors, and you have it also in your abstract book, that HP is the third biggest sponsor, and they specifically asked that the sponsorship be targeted toward covering part of the cost of the wonderful gala dinner we had yesterday, and that unfortunately I missed it. Missed. Right. But thank you. So the, the question is, was it a good dinner? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Amos. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a real pleasure to be here, and I'd like to thank the SIB and Swissprop for uh, allowing us to talk, allowing us, allowing me to talk. Uh, it's especially delightful to be in such a cool, temperate climate. I left Boston yesterday afternoon, and it was 105 and climbing, so this is pretty cool. I'm going to keep the talk fairly light. I haven't slept for 36 hours. If I try and be serious, I'll send myself to sleep, uh, which for me would be good, but for you would be pretty damn boring. And the last thing I have to say before I uh, start into my talk proper is the commercial bit. I work for HP. We build and sell computer systems, especially to scientists. The end. Okay, so the first thing is a lot of statistics, and the statistics that everyone knows about, but it's worth just refreshing ourselves, are the, the basis. You know, 100 billion bases of sequenced genetic code in public databases since 1982. And these bases code for 165,000 organisms, either in completely or in part. That's out of date, but you get the gist. The important piece is that the bulk of this data has been deposited in the last five years, and that graph gets steeper and steeper and steeper. There is one particular research institute in the UK that will be nameless that currently has just under one petabyte of data, and by the end of next year, we fully expect them to have at least a petabyte and a half, maybe more. They also have a database with one trillion entries in it. This is quite a remarkable uh, achievement, given that it is the sixth largest Oracle database in the world. One trillion entries. I find it quite amazing anyway. So with that background, I was reading a biography last year, and I came across a quote from Napoleon, where he said, a general never knows anything with certainty. He never sees his enemy clearly, and he never knows positively where he is. And it struck me that that might just well apply to any research scientist today, buried in a fog of data, not knowing where they are, not knowing where they want to go, not knowing what else is out there, not knowing where they should go to find the correct data. So it just goes to show, I suppose, that there's nothing, absolutely nothing new in the world. It's been around for a long time. We just haven't solved the problem of how to find out where we are yet. We're part to blame, the IT industry. In fact, we're very much to blame because if you come to us and say, we'd like a petaflop computer, then we will say, okay, when do you want it? We're not gonna say you can't have one. We'll go off and try and find a way to build you one and charge as much as we can to get the thing to you. So we'll always rise to the challenge. A classic case is the magnetic media industry. They've just found a way, very recently, of increasing the amount of data that's capable of being stored on one platter by changing the way that they store the data. So instead of doing it horizontally, they now do it vertically, and you get an order of magnitude, at least, increasing capability of data storage. So We've solved one problem. We can now pack more data 
into a smaller space. And we'll carry on doing that. We'll sell you more discs to do that. All of the three major chip manufacturers, Intel, AMD, and IBM, have either just announced or are about to announce new processors that will be more powerful than the current family of processors out there. So you'll be able to do more for your book, which is fantastic. But it doesn't solve the basic problem. All we're doing is giving more capability to try and find our way through that fog of data. We're not actually solving the problem of the fog of data. There's also many exotic ways of trying to boost the power. You can go out and buy accelerators, you can buy all sorts of chips, you can buy gaming chips, you can plug them into your uh, processors, and sure enough, it will change things slightly, you'll get things done slightly qu more quickly. You know, we can, you can do anything you want to a, pro to a computer, you can add anything to it and make it uh, that bit more powerful, that, that bit quicker, but at the end of the day, it's not really going to solve anything because the, the exotics themselves do not always bring the right results, especially if you're trying to work in a, a, a homogeneous environment where you want your code to be able to run on any system. Well, the exotics don't let you run on any system, and you end up with <coughs> this sort of thing, and I'm grateful to Cray for this. This was, was to try and demonstrate how you get to be the number one supercomputer in the world, where you have processor power against bandwidth. So the top picture shows you how you actually get to do something by increasing your bandwidth with a small processor. The bottom one gets you to the first place in the uh, top 500 list, but it doesn't let you do anything because the poor bloody horse is up in the air and you're not going to go anywhere fast. So exotics don't answer the question that's posed. How do we find our way through the fog of data? We sat on a volcano of data. It grows and it grows and it grows. And it might be a very beautiful and benign volcano like Mount Fuji. I don't think it is. I think it's actually more likely to be something like Mount Vesuvius. And Vesuvius is supposedly going to blow anytime soon. It's overdue. It has a cycle of something like 46 years. We're well past the 46th year. There is a plug of lava holding in all the magma. And soon it's going to go bang. And we're sat on a data volcano that will go bang one day if we don't do something about it. Just don't go to Naples, is all I would say. Beautiful city though it is, you might get caught in it. And then in uh, 2,000 years' time, someone will find you. Maybe doing the wrong sort of thing. Things are not going to get better either, because daily we are adding to this volcano of data, this fog. Translational medicine, just to take one new field, is adding more and more data to what exists out there. There are more omics coming along all the time. Someone finds a new area of study that adds to our knowledge, but also adds to that data and makes it more difficult for other researchers to actually get to the, the information that they need. There's an increased interest in visualization and imaging. Uh, I know this doesn't impinge directly on the research areas that you may be covering, but there's now a big, big interest in what's started to be called digital pathology. And we've done some work looking at the potential for digital pathology. If you replace one typical pathologist microscope with a scanner, an imaging scanner, you can create 1.4 terabytes of uncompressed data a day with just that one scanner. And a hospital may have 10 of these, so you're looking at 14 terabytes of data a day from one hospital. Multiply that by all the hospitals, and you've got a hell of a problem that needs to be solved. So these sorts of things are just adding more and more problems to the issues that we've got today. I apologize ahead of time if you recognize yourself here. It's not just the computer industry that causes the problems. The customers themselves don't help. So if you do recognize yourself, shame on you. But I do apologize. 
So if you think that a 2 million euro cluster is a nice single user development system, then you've got a problem. You're not helping. If you need binoculars to see the end of your computer room, then you've got a problem. And you're not helping yourself. And boy, these are not something that isn't happening out there. I can take you to places where this sort of thing is the truth. When you order storage systems, the analysts issue buy orders for magnetic media. And that happens too, in a sort of way. You measure your system network connectivity in hundreds of kilometers of cables or fiber. Does anyone recognize any of the systems that they know so far without pointing any fingers? You dream about cooling systems that don't exist anymore. And finally, when you need to boot the system, you telephone the local nuclear power plant. These are big issues. I know I'm joking. But if we take the, the uh, institute where they have that nearly petabyte of data, the cost of the environment, the cost of the power alone, is equal to the cost of the computer hardware every year now. So we're, we're having to look at things in a different way, which means we've got to be smarter about how we look at the data. We can't keep on adding more and more horsepower. We can't keep on adding more and more storage to the systems. It's just not physically possible. So can we make better use of the available data? Yes, of course we can. And I know that Amos agrees with this because I first heard him say, let's have better algorithms, seems like four or five years ago now, in response to a question that someone asked from the audience, what can we do? We need better codes and we need better techniques. Now, the computer industry alone can't do that. That has to come from you, the users. We can support what you do. We can help with the techniques. We can look at ways of using technology and techniques that we use in other industries. We can maybe use some of the, the things that are being done around the semantic web. But at the end of the day, you have to remember that if you leave it up to us, if you think that we're going to solve the problems, then we'll just keep supplying more flops and more bites, because that's what we're here for. We're not here to actually make it easy for you to buy smaller and smaller systems. We're here to make it difficult for you. We want you to buy bigger and bigger systems. And you can only do so much with increased horsepower and storage. You have to actually start to look at the applications that you run. At the end of the day, there is absolutely no substitute for hard work, for making sure that the data is clean, that it's usable, that it's not full of rubbish. You can't get away from the grunt work. We can't supply the hardware, the technology that'll take that away. Once you've got good data, we can supply you the systems that will make it fairly easy to actually find what you want to find. But we're not going to solve all the problems. That, I'm afraid, is down to you. See, I said I'd keep it light. That's it. Thank you. Okay, so do we have any questions? No. No. Okay, so apparently there are no questions. So just once again, thanks to Lionel Bins. Thank you.